Hello and welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. I'm Victor Campos. So let's dive into our first social network. We're going to talk about Twitter. So if I go to twitter.com, what we're going to do as our first lesson is create a Twitter account. If you go to twitter.com, you will see various headlines, various tweets, and maybe even a live event going on. Twitter, in a nutshell, is a social network. It's a broadcast platform. It's a marketing tool. It's a place for your business to reach an audience. Now I'm gonna use the shorthand of business, or product, or brand. But anything you have online that needs promotion, Twitter will help because you can reach customers directly on Twitter. You've got a bakery. You can reach people that are interested in baking. You've got a band. Well, you can reach people that'll buy your tickets. You've got a nonprofit organization. You can reach people that are interested in donating. Just about any business or brand will benefit from Twitter because you'll be able to reach your customers, your constituents, your niche directly. So the first thing we're going to do is to create an account. If you've already got an account, you can use it. But I would recommend to create a new account, which then you can delete later. And you can create the account in order for you to understand all the aspects of Twitter. So I would recommend for you to create a brand new account anyway, because then you can remove it at any point. These social networks change all the time. And so if you see what the latest features are, you might find out that they're very useful for you and your business. So on Twitter.com at the top right corner, I'll click sign up. To join Twitter, we need to fill in a few pieces of information. We have full name, phone or email and password. Full name. Here, if this is your business, you're going to put the full name of your business. So I'm going to have the fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Now, Twitter has a full name and a username. Most networks have something like that. One a full name, one a username. And the full name is a non-unique name that has a lot of leeway in what you can write. So I'm creating Victor's Bakery, but I could create a brand new account called San Diego, California. And it'll let me, notice the check mark there, because this is a non-unique name and many accounts could have the same name. Now, how do you keep only one entity with a name? On the next screen, we will see the username. That's the unique name that only one account in the world can have. But a full name, anyone can have this name. We need some phone number or email to verify you as a real entity because spammers can create an account and you're not a spammer so you want to have a properly set up account now for educational purposes I'm gonna say I've got Victor's Bakery at victorsbakery.com which is not real but it'll accept it the problem with making up an email address here is I cannot verify my Twitter account I would need a real email address here and as advice, if I had victorsbakery at gmail.com, that is less quote unquote believable than something like sales at victorsbakery.com. The reason being is that anyone can create a Gmail account, anyone can create a Hotmail account, a Yahoo Mail account, all of these free services, anyone can create one of those accounts for free. And therefore, any spammer can create 
one of those email accounts. But if you've got an email account that's attached to your website domain name, only you can create that. Only you can claim that and use that. So that's much more legitimate. So I would recommend, if you haven't done so yet, invest in buying a domain name and buying an email account associated with it. You'll be much more professional and you'll also be able to set these accounts up a lot better. Now in my case, I've already set up sales at victorsbakery.com. So we're seeing here also only one email address can be attached to one Twitter account. So if I had info at victorsbakery.com for the moment, I'd be fine. Make up a password here. The stronger the password, the better, so that you don't get hacked. We've got the option, tailor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Now, Twitter, like most social networks nowadays, are going to show you ads. Advertising is part of the modern web, for better or for worse. So you're not going to be able to avoid ads. But do you want to see ads that are tailored toward your interests? What's going to happen is that if you turn that on, Twitter will leave a cookie on your computer that will track what you've been looking at online, and then you'll see ads on Twitter that relate to your browsing. If that sounds very invasive, well, Facebook also does it. YouTube also does it. Google also does it. Every website does it. And whatever your opinion of it is, you have the ability to control that to some degree. So if you turn off Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits, you won't get that cookie and you won't be tracked. A possibility of why you might want to turn that on is, again, you're going to see ads on Twitter. Perhaps you want to see ads related to the topic of your business. So your business is going to view ads. And the point of that, as we'll see later in more detail, is that other ads could be inspiration for what you can post as well, what you can share, what you can tweet about. So that's a little complex, but we'll get to it later. And finally, I've got advanced options. If you turn that on, we have two options that are checked on that say, let others find me by my email or let others find me by my phone number. So if I have input my email address here and someone searches Twitter for that email address, so they could find your Twitter account. Now that's good if you're a business. If you're using info at victorsbakery.com, well, that's an email address you set up legitimately for your business. And if you want people to find your Twitter account and they know your email address, they can search for the email address and find your Twitter account so that they can follow you, keep up to date with you, and so forth. Same thing with a phone number. So it's up to you to decide what you'd like to do with all of these three check marks. But think in terms about a business. How do these help my business? So there's terms of service, privacy policy, and cookie use that you may want to read there. I'll click sign up. Again, many people can create a Twitter account. Many people have created a Twitter account. There are over, I believe, 330 million users on Twitter at the moment. So globally, there are 330 million people using Twitter. That's more than the population of the United States. But many accounts may be spam accounts, fake accounts, bad accounts. The way Twitter helps weed out those bad accounts is by verifying that the entity creating the Twitter account is a real person. So it's going to ask you for a phone number where it will send you a text message to prove you're a real person, not a spammer. You should be able to see a skip button if you don't want to do this. And if you're going to do this legitimately for your real business, I would add a phone number to verify your identity. Because if you want to get one of those blue verified check marks, you'll need a real phone number. And what a verified check mark is, I'll talk about that later. So I'll skip. 
And here we go, username. Now, the full name can be changed at any point. The email address can be changed at any point. Anything about Twitter can be changed at any point. Here, I need to choose a username. This is also known as the, as the at username, so at Victor. Well, at Victor was already taken. The Twitter name Victor was already taken. Twitter's been around more than 10 years now. So someone got the Twitter name probably nine and a half years ago. Okay, well, I'm trying to do Victor's Bakery. Usernames have a limitation in Twitter and in most networks in that they cannot have spaces or special characters such as apostrophes and such. Twitter is telling me your username can only contain letters, numbers, and underscore. Okay, capital letters don't matter, but capital letters are useful in order to uh, aid readability. So if I wanted my Victor's Bakery account, it says it's taken. Okay, what about if I do Victor's underscore bakery? That's already taken. So with a network that's over 10 years old, if you're only now getting on Twitter, you're probably going to run into the problem of your preferred username being taken. And this is the unique username that only one account in the world can have. I can create as many Twitter accounts with a full name of Victor's Bakery. You saw I did that on a previous screen. But here now I'm having trouble creating Victor's Bakery username. That's going to be the address twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery. So I'm going to need to get creative here. I could do the Victor's Bakery, but by that time I run out of space. I also have a limited amount of space to create a username. Perhaps some of these limitations will be changed eventually, that usernames can be made longer, that different characters can be added. Who knows? But at the moment, we have a limited number of spaces for the username, no empty spaces, no special characters. I can change this whenever I want, but I'll start off with TH Victor's Bakery. Maybe I, maybe I want to do Victor's Bakery SD for San Diego, already taken. So again, this could be one of your first challenges. So I'll say um, uh, Victor's Bakery. Or you can do numbers as well. Victor's Bakery 1, already taken. 11, all right, good enough. And it's going to give me suggestions. They're not that good usually. But I've got my username. You don't want to skip this or else it'll give you a gibberish username. Next. A quick overview here. Twitter is a constantly updating stream of the coolest, most important news, media, sports, TV, conversations, and more, all tailored just for you. So if you are using an existing Twitter account, you won't see this. There's really no way to get back to this screen. It doesn't matter if you can't get back to this screen, but I'm going to show you why this is a valuable screen to get to if you're able to. Twitter or any social network can be run as a dialogue or as a monologue. So monologue, the root word mono of one, and log, I believe, is speech, so single speech. A monologue, one person talking at people. Dialogue, multiple people having a conversation. You can run your social media as a monologue or a dialogue. You can use your Twitter or YouTube or Snapchat or Facebook, whatever, as a monologue in that you tweet messages, post videos, share snaps, etc., out to your followers and never really interact with them, never reply, never follow up. That's a monologue. And that works for the biggest companies out there that have thousands or millions of followers. They can afford to be a monolithic monologue type of social network account. But most of us in the smaller realms would do better if 
we engage in social media as a dialogue. I'm going to tweet something, someone replies to my tweet, and then I'm going to reply to that person with a follow-up saying thank you, or check this out, or many of the other things we'll be talking about in this class. The purpose of that is to foster conversation, a dialogue, which could result in interactions, into follows, into sales, whatever your conversion goal is, whatever you're trying to accomplish. The purpose of Victor's Bakery is for me to sell cupcakes. Now, I'm not going to sell a cupcake from a tweet directly. They may, there may be a button that says, buy now, buy this cupcake now. But if no one is seeing my tweets that say, buy this cupcake, then Twitter's not working for me. So I need to build followers. I need to build an audience. And part of the way you build an audience is via interaction, via a dialogue in social media. So I'm going to recommend for everyone in the class, run all of your social media as a dialogue. And we'll see how, we'll see the nuances as the course go on. In addition to teaching college classes, I'm also part of a business where we do social media for clients, where we run Twitter for, for companies and create YouTube videos and so forth. And we have had firsthand success in using social media as a dialogue. Getting back to this screen here, if I select topics of what my business is, Twitter will help me connect with people and companies related to that topic. I will see the content related to my business. I could find customers related to my topic. Again, we'll go into detail about how all that works later, but for the moment, I will select a few topics here. So Victor's Bakery, from these that are listed here, I don't really see anything about food and such. I suppose I could choose lifestyle, but I could type in topics. So what about food? I see food, food and drink, hashtag food security, hashtag food. We'll talk about hashtags later. But let's say the topic of food and drink and the topic of baking. So we've got baking, baking with Megan, etc. I'll do baking. Maybe one more topic. Cooking with kids. So these are some topics that my account is going to be about. Again, if you've previously created a Twitter account, there's no way to get to this. We will, however, talk about this topic that we're doing here in more detail later. Continue. I may want to add my contacts from Gmail or Outlook, or it may also suggest other accounts, Yahoo and such. The purpose of this is to connect on Twitter with those you've already connected with on your email. So if you have an email contact list on Gmail or Outlook, you can connect it to Twitter and Twitter will tell you, hey, John is on Twitter, why not connect with them? Janet is on Twitter, why not connect with her? And you're going to build followers that way, build an audience. The pros and cons of doing this is that if your Gmail or your Outlook is more about personal relationships than business relationships, you may not want to build your business on the backs of your friends and family. Is Aunt Gertrude really going to follow you on Twitter? Is Cousin Ted going to like your stuff on Twitter? Maybe, maybe not. So it's up to you to decide if you want to connect your address books here. For the purposes of the class at the moment, I won't, but you'll be able to on your own if you'd like. This you can do from another screen if you've already got your Twitter account already set up. So I'll click no thanks. Based on the topics I chose previously, it's recommending that my business, Victor's Bakery, follow all of these accounts. Now, the reason it's suggesting these is because I chose the food and drink category, maybe other 
topics based on my other activity, based on my location. So to some degree, Twitter knows my general location, the San Diego area. And it's suggesting follow 21 or more or less of these accounts. So all social networks have these basic concepts. In Twitter, I can follow accounts and I can have followers. If I follow an account such as Jamie Oliver, Alton Brown, or Bon Appetit, what I'm saying to Twitter is I wish to see the tweets that Jamie makes, that Alton makes, that Bon Appetit makes. I wish to see their tweets when they share a picture, a video, an ad, a promotion. I want to keep up to date with Ruth Reichel, Bobby Flay, etc. I want to keep up to date with Anthony Bourdain. That's what I'm saying when I follow. The opposite. Followers. I want Jamie Oliver to follow Victor's Bakery. I want Dave Chang to follow Victor's Bakery. I want John Smith to follow Victor's Bakery. I want Janet Jones to follow Victor's Bakery. I want followers as well, because followers are paying attention to what I'm doing on Twitter, what I'm doing on Facebook, what I'm doing on YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, Vine, Periscope, etc., etc. There's a bit more of an importance to get followers than for you to follow. I want more people paying attention to me than me paying attention to more people. Because I may follow a thousand people. That means I'm going to get a lot of tweets. I'm going to look at a lot of tweets all day long. It could be overwhelming. So you may say, okay, great. Um, I won't follow any of these. I want, to have z I want to follow zero. I want everyone to follow me. We'll see why in detail later. That might not be the best strategy for you to not follow accounts. In short, what I will say at the moment. If I'm creating a brand new Twitter account, no one knows I exist. When I follow an account, when one of these check marks is turned on, when I follow any of these accounts, they get a notification on their Twitter account that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. So if I click follow here, Food and Wine will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. Ariana Grande will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. So at the very least, these accounts will know that I exist. They may then choose to follow me back. Now, honestly, these big names are probably not going to follow you back unless you have amazing content or you yourself are pretty well known. Celebrities often follow celebrities. Important people often follow important people. Not to discourage you, but you're probably not going to get followed by the Volaris airline. Or the president of Mexico. We'll talk later on about building followers. But during this process, the point where we, why we may want to follow accounts is for inspiration. What is Anthony Bourdain tweeting about? What is Food & Wine tweeting about? What is Alton Brown tweeting about? I can post something like that. I can share something like that. I can tweet something like that. I can take a photo like her. I can make a video like him. I can share a link like them. So really, the purpose early on is a bit more for inspiration rather than trying to build followers. So you can choose to follow all of these or not. I'm going to turn off all of these local ones. In my case, they don't quite work. But if it suggested to me, for example, San Diego or, you know, local businesses and such, I may follow. So I'm just going to cut it down to these directly food and drink accounts. Again, for inspiration. If I have an idea, well, I really want to follow the president. 
I can find the president and follow him. For the moment, I'm just going to follow some of these suggestions. So here we go, I have a brand new Twitter account. There's a lot to see about what I've got with this account, and that'll be coming up on the next video. So by this point, hopefully you have created a Twitter account with me, or have one from a previous time. Come back for the next video, and we'll see, well, what do we do with it? This has been Victor Campos.